So every Tuesday, I hang out with a few of my friends, and we usually end up talking about a variety of random topics, with gaming mostly taking the spotlight. But something that almost always comes up in these discussions is the latest trend which has taken the internet by storm. Whether it was Five Nights at Freddy's, Undertale, or Bendy and the Ink Machine, we often search for the answer of one question. Why are these specific games so popular? And while we're on the topic, why do all these games seem to share the same fan base? How did the internet go from being obsessed over a Chuck E. Cheese themed horror game to a 30s platformer? Well, the seemingly simple way to answer this question would be to break each game down, like I've done in other videos, and find a recurring theme or aspect within each one, a thread that links all the games together, so to speak. Many have found that this thread exists, but only for certain games, like how Five Nights, Tattletale, Hello Neighbor, and Bendy are all indie horror games. However, there seems to be no solid links between them and the run-and-gun platformer Cuphead or the pacifist RPG Undertale. This seems to show that there is no link or thread connecting all of these games into one big chain, and the only reason these games exploded in popularity is random chance. However, what if I told you that by the end of this video, I can show you how we can take each of the individual links in the genres or theming of these games, along with analyzing social events at the time, to not only explain why I believe these games got popular, but see in the next video how we can predict what the next extremely popular game will be. I'm Etra from Etra Games, and today we're going to try our best to figure out how this phenomenon started, how everything is linked together, and how this chain of games will inevitably end. So, as many of you know, this chain of Five Nights at Freddy's, Undertale, Joy of Creation, Tattletale, Hello Neighbor, Bendy and the Ink Machine, and Cuphead started with Five Nights at Freddy's. The game released around four years ago to supposedly be a day one success. Yet, one thing many people overlooked at the time is that day one breakout success seemed to be the norm of just about every other horror game at the time, with Amnesia, Slender, and Anna being prime examples. What made all these horror games so popular at the time was the rise of big name Let's Players like Jacksepticeye, Markiplier, and PewDiePie all playing these games to capture their terrified reactions for the world to see. These horror games created their own chain, very similar to the one we're analyzing today. Yet what made Five Nights different than other indie horror games played before? And what made it ultimately create a more popular chain than the indie horror reaction group that came before it? Well, I am here to argue that the main reason it became so popular was not because of anything from the game itself, but rather because of the time when it was released and the community it created. See, at the time it was released, in August 2014, Five Nights attracted a struggling community. At the time, a very, very, very specific subgenre of people whose YouTube channels were dedicated to covering and occasionally making Minecraft and My Little Pony songs were having a rough time. At the time, these unconventional music creators were struggling to survive on YouTube due to the My Little Pony series going through a sudden 329 day hiatus and with Minecraft going on a similarly sudden 544 day update hiatus. This decline in popularity caused by the hiatuses caused these channels to be desperate for ideas that would keep their small businesses from falling apart. They jumped through Disney music, Zelda music, and even tried their hand at some original pieces. These YouTubers tried everything to maintain their dying audiences, and for them, all hope seemed lost. That is, until one of these channels, called The Living Tombstone, struck gold by creating a musical hit song creatively named The Five Nights at Freddy's Song. With 120 million lifetime views, it was a monumental success, which led to more songs, which led to more let's plays, which led to more theories and discussion, which led to more songs, and so on. But Etra, you may ask, how do I supposedly know that out of all things to start this insane craze of chained games and separated Five Nights at Freddy's from all the other indie horror games before, 
was a song made by a My Little Pony obsessed YouTuber. Well, it's simple really. If we just type in the names of any of those games on YouTube and search for the most viewed video for Five Nights at Freddy's, Undertale, Bendy and the Ink Machine, Cuphead, the number one search result for each and every one is, you guessed it, a fan-made hit song by these YouTubers. And someone may point out that a fan-made song is not directly at the top of Hello Neighbor and Tattletale in terms of views, and I'll actually be able to explain why later. But the point for now is that this musical factor should at least be accounted for when talking about how these games link together and how each became popular. It is also extremely important to note because this musical factor didn't exist for any of the games in the previous horror game chain I mentioned. Unless, of course, you count the most popular Slenderman video, an um, epic Spanish rap video between Slenderman and Jeff the Killer. But my point is that Let's Players had the normal watchable challenge of having them play a horror game, and the brand new musical factor that should be accounted for was created. So let's put the watchable challenge and musical factor in a little chart here that we'll get to later. Each game in the Five Nights Saga took the internet by storm for the next year until the series ended with Five Nights at Freddy's 4. Now the new Five Nights at Freddy's music creators were essentially jobless and once again trying to find a new hit. Things got even worse when Scott Cawthon basically cemented the Five Nights name in the grave with the near universally hated FNAF World. So our Let's Players once again played games that didn't create much of an uproar. However, our wonderful musicians were once again jobless and desperate since they now had created an audience for Five Nights at Freddy's music and couldn't go back to My Little Pony or Minecraft due to those videos now getting little views. Out of this desperation came many covers of songs from the show Steven Universe, a show that gained massive popularity at the time due to a controversy regarding fan art in the community, which was about the equivalent of the more recent and now infamous IQ speech in the Rick and Morty fanbase. Then, DJ Smell, a startup My Little Pony scener and fan of both Undertale and Steven Universe, created the now famous Undertale parody version of the Steven Universe song Stronger Than You. On the Let's Play side of things, Undertale had a unique watchable challenge, not that of horror, but of players making moral choices. This was enough to dethrone Five Nights and set Undertale as the internet's next big hit, and I think you're starting to see the pattern here with just the first two games on the list. After Undertale came Joy of Creation Reborn, a fan game which showed what fans wanted to the newly teased fifth installment of the Five Nights series. By having a link to Five Nights and having a watchable challenge, the free roam horror game became decently popular. When the actual fifth installment of the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise didn't deliver the free roam horror experience many wanted, eyes turned to the brand new free roam horror game, Tattletale, and by the same process, Hello Neighbor shortly after with the musicians jumping on board once the game was both linked to the previous in some way and had a watchable challenge. Finally, Bendy followed suit in the same way as the previous, but instead of following after, it was started with the musical element, with DA Games' breakout musical hit song, Build Our Machine. From there, links were made to Cuphead due to the shared art style of Bendy. Along with that, it had a watchable challenge of difficulty, and with this, we can see a pattern that creates three requirements or rules which all these games seem to follow, which makes these three rules the connecting thread between all of them that we've been looking for. Number one, the game must have a watchable challenge for Let's Players. So far, this has been achieved through Let's Players getting scared by horror, frustrated by difficulty, and by making moral choices. Number two, the game must either be started with a musical hit song, or be linked to one of the past two games in genre or style. Number three, if the game becomes popular through a musical hit song, it can change the trending genre or style, and if the game becomes popular through its link in genre or style, 
then it can change the trending musical influence. Using these rules, we can see why each of these games became so popular. Well, at least by my best guess, this may not be a perfect answer. However, using these rules, we can explain how the smaller successes, Doki Doki Literature Club and Getting Over It with Bennett Foddy fit into the chain, why the fan bases are so hated, as well as be able to predict what the next super popular game will be. Hint, most likely it will be Bendy Chapter 4. But I'm out of time for today. So if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to be notified of when part 2 comes out, and hey, feel free to check out my other content, which breaks down why the games mentioned in this video work gameplay-wise. As always, regardless of your choice, have a wonderful day, and I will catch you all next time.